Hello and welcome back. This is day four of Steve's top 50 games of all time. Today we'll be doing numbers 20 through 11. Guaranteed fun. Sit back and relax. Unlock. Number 20 for me is the Unlock series of card games. These are basically escape rooms in a box that you can play and the cards will tell you which card to pull out next and look at. There are different rooms that connect. Perhaps the cards are room. There are items that are cards you can look at that may be combined with other items. There's a lot of stuff going on in these games. Now there's so many unlock games with different themes that you would be really hard pressed to find one that didn't seem interesting to you. Uh, now, these are best played with groups, with everybody working together. A lot of them are very difficult, so the more people, the more brains you have uh, pouring over these puzzles might be beneficial for solving them. But I also want to point out that there is an app integration. You can download the Unlock app on iTunes or uh, the Android, and that will allow you to put codes in and tell you whether you passed or not. Uh, so that's pretty cool, too. It helps you facilitate playing the game a little better. I love puzzle games, I love escape rooms, and the Unlock series is a ton of fun. Shogun. Coming in at number 19 for me today is Shogun. This is a war game where you are fighting over feudal Japan as one of the warlords and trying to take over. Now the game also has a cube tower, which that facilitates combat in that when you attack a region, you, the attacker and the defender, throw their cubes in the tower. Whatever comes out the bottom is uh, the casualties, right? They cancel each other out. But there's also green cubes in there. Those represent the villagers, and they will assist one of the two parties in the battle. So you, it's a little swingy, right? When you go into a battle, you never know for sure if you're going to win or not. Depends on what comes out of the cube tower. Anyway, that's the big fun of this game. I love the uh, the fact that combat, you can have an overwhelming force and you throw your cubes in and then at the bottom, a bunch of greens come out and maybe not all the ones you threw in come out and you wind up losing. It is representative, I think, of real combat in the real world that you're never sure if you're going to win or not. In the game, you go around attacking the different provinces, trying to take control of them, and then you can build castles and temples and such to help defend you and earn you points. I like these war-type war games, and for me, the cube tower really adds an extra element that I think is fun. Adds a lot of randomness. I love throwing the cubes in there and seeing what comes out the bottom. Lords of Waterdeep. So in this game, you take the role of one of the Lords of Waterdeep. One of the, uh, you know, underground behind the scenes, pulling the strings guys, who's not necessarily on the up and up. But in this, you are trying to gain influence over the city. And you do that by recruiting your agents that work for the various guilds. And then you use those agents to complete quests and those get you victory points. Meanwhile, you can also build buildings around the city, which also gets you points. And the goal is to have the most points at the end of the game. A lot of these quests are hard to complete. So you're gonna need a lot of resources to be able to do them, but those quests pay off big time. And the fun for me is getting the different quests, figuring out the way to beat them, and then pull them off before the game ends, because you don't score them if they're not done when the game finishes up. Now, this is a action selection worker placement game. And uh, you know what? I've been playing it for years. I still play it. I have it on uh, iOS. I play that a lot. It's fun. I recommend it with all the expansions. And if you like, worker placement games and you like D&D, you're going to love this one. I think it's great. Escape Room, the game. Coming in at number 17 for me is Escape Room, the game. Now this is a decent sized box and within it are three different escape room style puzzles. And it has a little electronic device that has batteries in it. Now that device will help you uh, as a timer and do other things uh, with the different scenarios. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. But one criticism I do have is I've seen people on Amazon reviews that say that their little timer device isn't working right. Mine works just fine, and I love the games. So that said, I love escape room games. It's a, kind of a theme on this list along with Warhammer and D&D. But they are great challenges. I love figuring out the puzzles. 
and when you figure one out and you progress on and eventually beat the game, that's a really good feeling. And that's why I like them. I like escape rooms in general. Any escape room themed game, I'm ready to throw down with. So uh, if you like puzzles, you like escape rooms, check out Escape Room the Game. Arcadia Quest. Number 16 on my list is Arcadia Quest. This is a fun little game with chibi style minis that run around. What you do is you form guilds of these different characters. Uh, you have a team basically you're making. And that's fun too because you could do a drafting mechanic to pick those characters. And I love drafting mechanics. That's a lot of fun because then you can see what the other opponents may have to pick from. And you can pick something that hopefully will jive well with the current characters you have's power, so you can try to do some cool combos, perhaps. Now, Arcadia Quest is kind of like a dungeon crawl style game where you are on a map and there are monsters and there's loot to be had, but there's also other players in it. And there's usually some sort of quest or mission going on there that you can do and whoever collects whatever the scenario dictates will win. Now, what I like about this game is it is PVP, player versus player. You can engage the other players on the board and fight their little chibis and send them back to the respawn area by defeating them in combat. That's a lot of fun. And the monsters are on the board, too, so you have all kinds of things. Do I go after the monster? Do I go after this player? Do I get the item? There's a lot of choices to be had during this game. And the fun for me is fighting the other players, right? The monsters don't really do much. They just kind of stand there. So this isn't a real good example of a dungeon crawl game. It's more like a, a PvP game in my book. But either way, whatever you call it, I call it fun. Battle Lore. Number 15 on my list today is Battle Lore. This is a squad-based war game that takes place in the land of Terranoth, which you might know from other games such as Rune Wars and Descent. In this, you build a squad of fantasy creatures on whichever side you're playing. It's a two-player game, although you can play with more if you wanted to do teams. And you are just trying to move around the map, use your powers, and take down the other opponents. It's not like uh, about Heroes of Normandy in that it is a little more on the cartoony side. But, you know what? It's fun. I like executing maneuvers, getting behind the enemy lines, taking them down, capturing and holding points. There are scenarios in this, too. You can play and achieve the snares. There's a lot of replayability on this little box. And if you like squad-based war games, this is a great one because it doesn't take too long and it's a lot of fun. Spectre Ops. Number 14 on my list is Spectre Ops. This is a hidden movement style game with a twist on it in that there is a hunt going on. There are three characters trying to track down one other character. And the characters are cool too because they have asymmetrical powers. Whichever character you choose has a special ability. And in this game, one character is planting, they have an objective, whether they're planting bombs or whatever the objective may be, they have to complete that objective and escape with hopefully not being found at all. But if they are found, they have to stay alive because the hunters that are going after them are really trying to track them down. They are going to shoot them and finish them before they can execute the plan and escape. And that is fun. The teamwork required by the hunters to find the the bomber is, is pretty good because there's a lot of places you can hide. There's a lot of blind spots. So the hunters, they have to work together. They have to spread out and they have to cover ground and not let the guy or girl, slip past them and escape. So the fun for me is the cat and mouse, the hiding, the hunting. I love it all. I love these hidden movement games, and that's why Spectre Ops is on this list. Wasteland Delivery Service. Number 13 on my list today is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Now, when you look at this game, it looks like it is from some sort of Mad Max-style future where everything's in ruins. And that's exactly what's going on here. I like to think it's the Mad Max movie, but all the stuff that's going on in the background when Mad Max is running around hanging, having adventures. So in this, you're playing a, a truck, and you are doing pick up and deliver. Pretty easy, right? But you can upgrade your truck. You can get weapons on it. There are rovers running around that are hunting you down. You can even attack the other players and take their loot. It's a lot of fun. Upgrading the truck is awesome. The figuring out the logistics of the picking up and delivering is great too. When you do a delivery, 
the uh, let's say I go to a city and I deliver some water, they're going to have enough water, so they're going to change what they're looking for. And you pull a random tile out, and then maybe they're looking for bullets now. I mean, it depends. So you just can't do the same run back and forth like you can in certain other games. It's constantly changing, which is great. It adds for a lot of replayability. This game's fun. I like the theme. I like the running around in the trucks. The combat's fun. And, you know, the whole thing's just fun. Wasteland Express Delivery Service. I recommend it. Gloomhaven. Coming in at number 12 is Gloomhaven. I'd be remiss without adding this giant box on my list. And this is a giant box that contains a lot of awesome. So this is a dungeon crawl, although you can do campaign setting. And there's a world map, so you can kind of like choose where you want to go next. This is a choose your own adventure kind of deal. And the dungeon crawling part is cool because you get unique characters. When you start the game, you pull out these packs, and those are the different characters. And what I like about it, too, is that they are interesting, unique, made-up characters. I mean, you got your humans and stuff, obviously, but then the races that are in it are unique. I haven't seen them in any other RPG game, which is great. It's refreshing. I will say the story aspect is a little light, but as far as dungeon crawl part, it's fun. You, you level up, you get loot, just like all these other ones. But the theme, the big box, and all the possibilities therein are what make this one great. That's Gloomhaven. Time Story. Number 11, rounding out my list today, is Time Stories. This is the game where Bob hates you. Bob's the guy that sends you back in time to complete these missions. You and the other players are working together to solve whatever the scenario is that you're playing. Basically, it's um, Quantum Leap, where you go backwards in time and you inhabit some other body and you take control and you change something. Because there's some supernaturally sci-fi things going on that are out of place and you have to fix them and restore order to the timeline. So this game is fun. I love the first adventure that comes with the game. It's amazing. The other ones are good too. I haven't played them all, but there's so many to pick from. You can be playing this game for some time now. And there are items that can carry over from one adventure to another one. You might find a cube in the first mission, and then you won't need it again until the fourth game that you're playing. Basically, you just wake up in a body, and there's you're in a room, and you don't know what in the world's going on. You gotta explore... You got to talk to the other players. You got to, and the time's ticking. You have a, a deadline to complete this mission. So the whole thing's fun. You got to figure out what's going on. You got to solve whatever puzzles there are. You got to complete whatever the goal is and get out in time or Bob's going to yell at you. I recommend Time Stories. It is so much fun. I love it. All right. Well, that rounds out my number 20 through 11. I hope you come on back tomorrow when I finish with my top 10. It is guaranteed to turn some heads. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.